can't think as people do. A machine is different from a person. Once they think differently. The interesting question is, just because something uh, thinks differently from you, does that mean it's not thinking? Our topic today is artificial intelligence. With me is Dr. John McCarthy, one of the founders of the discipline of artificial intelligence. Dr. McCarthy is one of the co-founders of the first artificial intelligence laboratory at MIT and the founder of the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at Stanford University. He is the inventor of LISP, the major computer language used for artificial intelligence. In, I started my work on artificial intelligence in about 56, although I became really interested in before that in 49 when I was a beginning graduate student in uh, mathematics. Um, I would say that the field has made somewhat less project, progress than I hoped, uh, although I didn't have uh, any definite opinion as to how fast it would. Uh... A robot for industry. And this is it, Unimate, a machine that can reach out to seven feet and perform a multitude of tasks in factory or laboratory as skillfully as a man but without getting tired. It's controlled by a built-in memory system. You just lead it once through the required motions and it can then repeat them 24 hours a day, week after week. It can position objects to within 50 thousandths of an inch. Professor Weizenbaum discovered when he created ELIZA. ELIZA is a computer program that anyone can converse with via the keyboard and it'll reply on the screen. We've added human speech to make the conversation more clear. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. My boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. Shaggy was the world's first mobile intelligent robot, embodying numerous breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, robotics, computer vision, navigation, and other research areas. The robot was developed from 1966 to 1972 by SRI International then called Stanford Research Institute, and its legacy and impact are still very much alive today. Shaky's really the great-grandfather of things like self-driving cars and even military drones. The hardware was really pretty primitive, but the software architecture and the software algorithms are what changed the world. I think we all thought we were doing really interesting stuff, so it didn't really uh, dawn on us that we were doing anything special. Shaky established a position about what we should be thinking about as possible, as feasible. The world was paying a lot of attention and we weren't quite used to that. Chess events never get covered like that. It was probably the biggest news coverage for a chess match ever. We were trying to prove that it was possible to build a chess machine that could beat the best human player in the world. It's also challenging Kasparov in any way. I mean, he's the pinnacle of chess. He was, he's an incredible genius.
I remember that morning going to the lab and I was thinking, this is it. This is the last Jeopardy game. This is Jeopardy, the IBM challenge. Here we go. Brad, if you're ready, make your first choice. Let's take alternate meanings for 200, Alex. Four-letter word for a vantage point or a belief. Brad. What is a view? Yeah. Watson. What is shoe? You are right. We actually took the lead. We were ahead of them, but then we started getting some questions wrong. Watson. What is leg? No, I'm sorry, I can't accept that. What is 1920s? No. What is chic? No, sorry. Brad. What is class? Class, you got it. Watson? What is Sauron? Sauron is right, oh. and that puts you into a tie for the lead with Brad. Last week, it played the world's best Go player, 19-year-old Kojin, with the help of a human handler. AlphaGo beat him three times, and after doing what it was designed to do, retired from the game. After this game played, after he continued to improve, I think that for me, it was 100 percent. If a system like AlphaGo can learn all the moves in Go well enough to beat a person, then it has the potential to replace lawyers and accountants, among dozens of other jobs. It might be perfect, but it has no way to navigate human politics. The uh, tantalizing promise of quantum computers is that they can do certain tasks exponentially faster than classical machines. And the quantum supremacy experiment is proof that this is indeed the case. The word quantum computer is a little bit misleading because it sounds like a computer. And when people think of computer, they think of a phone or a laptop. The truth is the phone and the laptop and even a very powerful supercomputer all operate according to the same fundamental rules. And a quantum computer is fundamentally different. The classical bit stores information as a zero or one, and a quantum bit can be both a zero and one at the same time. 